So when we look at caffeine content in tea, it depends on what type of tea it is, and sometimes it's also impacted by how we brew it, and also the leaf size. So, for instance, herbal teas don't usually contain any caffeine, and when we're talking about herbal teas, what I mean is teas like rooibos, or chamomile, or peppermint, anything like that is caffeine-free. There are some herbs though that have a caffeine-like effect or sometimes will contain caffeine. So if you're wanting to avoid caffeine, you do need to exercise some caution. An example of that is actually mate. So yerba mate has a very caffeine-like substance and if you're wanting to avoid caffeine, you have to use caution with mate. Now when we're looking at other types of tea, so green and black and semi-green and oolong tea, those have different amounts of caffeine. As a general rule, green tea is the lightest in caffeine. Uh, it has a very low caffeine content. Now the exception to that rule is matcha, which is powdered green tea, which means that every time you're having even a tiny bit of matcha, because it's powdered, it contains many, many cups of green tea in that small serving. So you're getting a higher dosage of caffeine. Matcha tea has a caffeine content that's almost more similar to black tea or can be actually similar to coffee. Semi-green or oolong tea is midway caffeine-wise between green and black tea, so it'll have a little bit more. Black tea is generally the type of tea that has the most caffeine of all the different classifications of tea. Pu'er tea or poli tea can have a varying amount of caffeine. You need to actually find out what type of tea it's derived from because pu'er tea can actually be produced from green, white, or black tea leaves, in which case the caffeine content will be impacted by the type of tea it is. So if it's a black pu'er, it will actually be higher in caffeine. If it's a green pu'er, it will be lighter in caffeine. White tea is quite similar to green tea in terms of caffeine content. Yellow tea is also similar to green tea in terms of caffeine content. Now there's a few other things about caffeine content. One is, is leaf size and how much you need to use per serving. So the larger the leaf and the fresher the leaf, usually the more flavor it releases in a short period of time and the less tea leaves you need to use per serving. So for that reason, if your tea is stale, or it's low quality, often more tea leaves are required to brew the same amount of tea. And in that case, your tea actually is gonna have a much higher caffeine content. A study about the health benefits of green tea found that caffeine is an active ingredient in helping your system assimilate antioxidants. Therefore, drinking decaffeinated green tea isn't a great idea if you want green tea's health benefits. A lot of low quality brands that have a lot of dust or very, very fine tea leaves have dramatically more caffeine content than a higher quality loose tea. And if the loose tea is very fresh, um, or if it's a very high quality tea bag, like the ones that we produce, where they're made with whole leaves and the leaves are very, very fresh, then you're gonna actually get a lower caffeine content in your tea. There are a few tricks to reducing the amount of caffeine in your cup of tea. One is, is to actually steep your tea for a very short period of time, but the flavor in that case is gonna be quite mild. And so what you need to do sometimes is add a little bit more tea to that short steeping time to still get flavor from your tea. And literally what it is is just steeping your tea for 20 seconds or so. The next trick is actually kind of the reverse of that, which is to pour water over your tea, let it sit for about 30 to 60 seconds, and then strain it and re-pour fresh water over that, those tea leaves so you're drinking the second infusion. And what's happening is, is it almost sounds a little bit counterintuitive that you can do either of those things, but what it is is that caffeine in tea is time-released so it's releasing caffeine as you're letting the tea steep and by cheating and only steeping for a short period of time, you're gonna reduce the caffeine content or by letting the tea steep first and then reinfusing it and drinking the second infusion, you're also gonna be able to reduce the caffeine content of your tea. Now, a lot of people think that caffeine is actually not very good for you. And studies are actually indicating that caffeine has some health benefits and it's not necessarily bad for you. The problem is dosage. So often people are having too much caffeine on an ongoing basis, and that can actually be hard on your system. And it can negatively impact your sleep, can also negatively impact your stress level. 
but there's health benefits associated with caffeine too. For instance, it actually boosts our brain function and may have a protective effect on memory loss as we age and on Alzheimer's or dementia. There are also studies indicating that the caffeine in tea is good for our circulation and that it's also good for our cardiovascular system. So again, lots of health benefits associated with caffeine, but it comes down to how much are you having and when you have too much, it's not necessarily a good thing. There's an urban legend around what has more caffeine, tea or coffee. And there's a really tricky way to understand this. So the first part of it is that a pound of coffee usually contains less than a pound of tea. Of course, that will depend on whether you're drinking green or black tea. But if we're comparing black tea, which has the highest caffeine content, to coffee, we're gonna find that black tea will sometimes and often contain more caffeine per pound than coffee. But the trick is, is that a pound of black tea will yield lots and lots of cups of tea, and a pound of coffee will yield far fewer cups of coffee. So what's happening is, is that on a per serving basis, we're getting less caffeine per cup of tea than we are per cup of coffee. There's another factor that's really interesting in terms of how the caffeine is metabolized in our systems when we drink tea versus coffee. So coffee is actually extremely effective at releasing caffeine into our systems. As soon as you have a cup of coffee, it very, very quickly goes into your blood and it releases a high dosage of caffeine. So typically you get kind of a rush or a jolt of energy after having a cup of coffee. And the caffeine in coffee also arrives quickly and it departs relatively quickly too. So we often feel the caffeine from coffee quickly. We also feel it when it's wearing off and it wears off much more quickly. But when you're having a cup of tea, the amount of caffeine in the tea is already lower, but there's another factor, which is that it releases into our systems more slowly. It's kind of almost like thinking about it as a time-release capsule of caffeine. So over a slow period of time, you get a little bit of caffeine that's released continually which means that you don't get the same jolt of energy when you have a cup of even strong black tea, but it lasts longer and it then dissipates very, very slowly. So you kind of don't really notice when it leaves, which also generally tends to make you feel more relaxed and less sort of anxious sometimes when you have caffeine. So even though it's not bad for you, if you have too high of a dosage of it all the time, it overstimulates your system and it can impact your sleep and it can also impact your overall health and well-being. But caffeine in and of itself isn't necessarily a bad thing.